It's time for Mr. Fundamental. Presented by no one. Coming into this game, the Lakers were undefeated on the road and definitely looking to extend that streak, even with Anthony Davis out with an injury. As for the Pacers, they've bounced back from a 0-3 start to the season and are now 18 and 9 as the sixth seed in the Eastern Conference because of their commitment to defense. However, they do have two weak spots in their top 10 defense, points in the paint and inconsistency on the perimeter. To start the game, the Lakers abused that first weak spot. They ran a handoff into a screen for LeBron. Brogdon and Turner contains it well and Sabonis bumps to Roman. Sabonis leaves McGee too early, leaving him open for the dunk. On the handoff, Turner had to step up to green and the Pacers had to foul on the lob attempt. The Lakers also attacked the Pacers' defensive weak link in Sabonis. They would either involve him in the pick and roll, where his hedge was ineffective, or they would force him to rotate on the weak side, and we've seen how he left his man early. He did adjust to it, and took away the lob to McGee. This was a great effort to close out, but I've pointed out Sabonis' struggles in closing out on the perimeter in my Pacers preview video. The Lakers don't score on this possession, but it did lead to an open three that Dudley rushed. As for the Pacers' inconsistent defense on the perimeter, it wasn't like they were giving up open threes, but they were late on rotating down. Green blows by Lamb, forcing Turner to step up. Brogdon doesn't rotate down on McGee, which leads to another dunk. Let's look at this again. This simple change in position between Dudley and KCP occupied Sabonis and Warren. They're not in a position to dig down on McGee or zone up the weak side shooters if Brogdon rotated down. I'm not kidding when I said the Lakers abused the Pacers in the paint since 24 out of the 28 first quarter points were in the paint. The Pacers were still within striking distance because of their offense. Their sets have multiple options even after the first few gets denied. Brockton's back screen forced KCP to take a step away from him. He runs off the pin down and immediately uses the Sabonis screen. With KCP trailing, McGee had to step up higher and a pocket pass gets Sabonis rolling to the rim and eventually he finishes. After faking the handoff to Warren, Sabonis hands it off to Brogdon, and another pocket pass gets him to slam. Ever wondered why the Sabonis handoffs are so effective? Well, Sabonis didn't hand off to Warren on purpose, because if he ran it with Warren, there are two weak side defenders, and one could tag him and the other zones up the weak side. In contrast, there are two shooters on the strong side. Brogdon basically has nowhere to attack, but Lakers pick and roll principles have McGee containing the ball handler. It's now Green's responsibility to tag Sabonis, but he doesn't want to leave his man open in the corner. In a perfect world, either LeBron or Dudley should have helped on the Brogdon drive, allowing McGee to stay on Sabonis. Or, on the pocket pass, Dudley should rotate all the way here. This is just a great design by the Pacers. The Lakers started to adjust and had their big sag back, and even invited the drive to prevent the roll man option. McGee sags back a bit and look at the driving lane. This spades Brogdon into a drive and McGee gobbles up the shot. This is some risky stuff, but McGee is athletic and long enough to do that. Again, Lamb thinks he's got McGee beat, but he thought wrong. The Lakers began to build a lead with tons of alley-oops. A simple maneuver around the screen forced Turner to step up. Weak side defenders were late to rotate, but there's nothing they can do when Superman gets that high up. All these alley-oops got the Pacers over concern, and Sabonis doesn't even step up to LeBron. The Pacers managed to stop the bleeding by inserting Aaron Holiday and McConnell, both providing some much needed spark to cut the lead down to 4 after the first. The second quarter was more of the same, and the Lakers led most of the way. Holiday continued to keep the Pacers close, going right at LeBron with the off-footed scoop shot. The Lakers couldn't pull away because of the poor shooting from deep and ended the half with a 2-point lead. The Pacers stormed back in the third by adjusting their defense. Their off-ball defenders were making great rotations with Lamb intercepting the alley here. They were also daring the Lakers to beat them from deep by packing the paint. Warren stayed on McGee for a second longer to eliminate any chances of an alley -oop, giving up a good look in the corner that misses. They also started to switch on screens with Sabonis. I highlighted how Sabonis could hold his own in isolations in the Pacers preview, and he finished off with a nice contest. It's all about the little things on the defensive end. Brogdon forces LeBron to catch the ball further out, Warren rotates over to prevent a pass to Dudley, while Lamb stays on green. The Lakers counter with a pin down for KCP, and McGee makes a nice read here. He saw that Turner was going to help on KCP, so he dives to the rim. However, KCP had no intention to pass, 
and that same slip allowed Warren to recover and block the shot. With the Lakers throwing alley-oops everywhere, everyone knew it was coming when Green and LeBron were out in transition. Lamb reads Green like a book and stops the fast break opportunity. The Pacers then suddenly turn into an offensive juggernaut but a combination of great execution, like this cut by Warren, and some Hail Mary shots at the end of the clock let them build up a lead. They did let it slip away, especially when LeBron was on bench and with Dwight dunking on everyone. This was the Lakers' first points in the paint in the second half, pushing the pace for holiday on Dwight, and that leads to another alley-oop. With the defense so focused on Dwight, Caruso had Daniels open for three. He didn't see him, but he does get it to the cutting Bradley, and Sabonis was too busy with Dwight to even contest a shot, and the Lakers trail by two after the third. In the fourth, the Pacers kept their lead with Sabonis joining the dunk party. They were moving the ball very well. First is the nice back door, then the kick out to the corner, and the extra pass to a holiday three. The Lakers continued to miss their shots from the perimeter, but they took back the lead when they attacked the basket with four straight and one possessions. LeBron got more aggressive and made his first shot in the second half, and these LeBron drives are just grown man moves. Bradley doesn't stay in the corner on the pick and roll. His man tags the roller, and a cut behind the defense gets him a basket. Pushing the ball up led to mismatches all around. Rondo gets the kick out on the wing, and he just threads the needle between three defenders, getting McGee another dunk. Brogdon settled down the Pacers and drops in the floater to tie the game. Check out how Sabonis flips the screen to erase Caruso. Brogdon doesn't attack until the screen is set to avoid an illegal screen, then the off-rhythm floater before anyone can contest. Again, the Pacers turn to Brogdon. They got a switch on the last screen, but LeBron and Rondo switches to prevent the size mismatch down low, which will come into play in a bit. Brogdon is sneaky quick and gets by Howard. He uses the rim to block off Howard and drops in the reverse. I'm not sure if this was by design or not, but the Pacers got LeBron and Rondo to switch. This left a 6-5 KCP instead of a LeBron to help on the drive and he was ineffective. The Pacers played some great defense on the other end, and the Lakers were forced to foul. Sabonis splits the free throws, but the Lakers had no timeouts left. They rushed up the floor, and I'm sure a Rondo 3 wasn't their best option to tie the game. The Pacers must be happy with beating one of the best teams in the league, and this win was a great confidence boost, especially ending the Lakers' road game streak. With a twin tower duo, it's puzzling that the Pacers are giving up a lot of points in the paint, particularly in this game. There are still some concerns over the Sabonis and Turner pairing, but if the wins continue to pile up, they won't need to worry about it. The Lakers came into this game shorthanded, and slotting in Dudley is a huge drop off from AD and Kuzma. Shooting is still a problem for them, but their star duo and elite defense will cover for that weakness. The last concern I have is the management of timeouts. This is the second game I've covered the Lakers, where they had no timeouts left in close games. Vogel used them earlier without running great sets afterwards. They got away with it in the game against the Pelicans, but not this one. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. The Twitter poll for tonight's game should be up, so vote for the game you want me to break down. Please give this a like rating down below, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.